the second folio edition of the plays of William Shakespeare, 1632. I'm Adam Douglas from Peter Harrington, and I'd like to show you this copy of uh, perhaps the most famous book in the English language. Uh, as a large folio, it's easier to show you on a cushion, so I'll just uh, get that out. Um, and we can open up and see what is, in effect, the first obtainable edition now of the book, because the first folio was very largely bought up by uh, the American collector Henry Folger. They're now in the Folger Institute in Washington, D.C., and uh, very few copies remain for collectors. So for most collectors, the second folio, um, printed, published nine years after the first, is going to be the first obtainable copy that they can get. Here we see that the second folio has the portrait over on the title page, the famous portrait of Shakespeare, and the imprint tells us that this copy was printed by Thomas Coates for Robert Allett and are to be sold at his shop in Paul's Churchyard in 1632, the sign of the black bear. Now, uh, this edition was divided among a number of uh, publishers, but Robert Allett took the lion's share of them. There was a later edition, a later printing of this uh, book, a later issue with a different title page, but this is the uh, first issue of 1632. And we see there the comedies, histories and tragedies published according to the true original copies, the second impression. Um, nowadays, we would call that the second edition. And facing the title page over here on the left are Ben Jonson's verses to the reader, the famous verses praising Shakespeare, talking about the portrait of Shakespeare. Uh, this leaf has been inlaid. That is, the original leaf has been cut down. You can see the line there the uh, extent of the original. This leaf very often is damaged in copies of the book, naturally being the first leaf in the book, it would take the most wear. And um, that's quite often restored. You'll also see a little paper patch at the top of the title page, but that's not affecting the text. These are very minor repairs compared to um, uh, a lot of copies of this book that you see. It's a complete, otherwise there is no restoration, there's no supplied text. This is a complete copy of the book. Uh, here are the preliminaries with the various poems. Of course, here is the famous poem, an epitaph on the admirable dramatic poet William W. Shakespeare, What Need My Shakespeare for His Honoured Bones, which is the first uh, published poem by John Milton very young at the time and uh, quite honoured to be placed in this company here at the beginning, along with Leonard Diggs and uh, this longer one of Ben Johnson, um, which we see here. And here are all the prelims. And then the plays start with The Tempest, which most people think was the last play Shakespeare wrote, which is why it was... Um, printed first, as it were, this is his latest hit. And uh, we see a very nice copy of the book. It's a nice, tall copy. Uh, sometimes when copies are rebound, which they almost inevitably are, they're trimmed down quite severely, but this has got nice wide margins throughout. It's a generally clean copy. Uh, there's one or two very small alterations made by a later reader, just little misprints being corrected there, very minor things. Um, but pleasant to see a reader using it and, uh, and uh, there is no problems to speak of. The last leaf has a small amount of paper repair just at the foot here. Just a little restoration to the paper. And there's an equivalent patch on the leaf over the facing leaf. But that is really relatively minor. Um, you do see copies which are in much worse state than this. So a complete copy of the second folio. If I take it off the cushion again, we can just have a look at the work of the binder. This is um, 
James Heyday, who was uh, a very good quality London binder of the Victorian period. He was actually the man who did uh, presentation copy bindings for Charles Dickens. So uh, he was working for the top authors of the day. He did uh, good quality work. This is a, a good quality piece by him. He eventually couldn't keep up with the cheaper binders. He was rather too lavish with his use of expensive materials and leathers and went out of business. But this is his, him, heyday in his heyday, you might say. For more details of this second folio and other editions of Shakespeare's works and others of the Elizabethan and Jacobean dramatists, please see the Peter Harrington website.